Hey guys! Today we're going to be looking at this story from the Unique Learning Systems curriculum. Uh, like I kind of explained in the newsletter, this isn't necessarily the topic for February, but I did uh, want you to read about the topic that is for February and decide if you'd like to participate. So instead of doing that today, we're going to read a story about reading food labels, and we're going to talk about uh, reading food labels on products and checking to see if maybe a product is healthy and how much maybe you, of that product you should eat at a time. So this story is called Reading Food Labels, Melanie Makes a Meal. So Melanie arrives at the grocery store. She takes a cart and begins shopping. So typically the first thing you need to do when you get to the grocery store is decide if you need a cart and kind of what size cart you need now because they have the baskets, they have the kind of smaller carts and then they have the big carts. Uh, I always fall into the trap of thinking maybe I don't need a cart and then they have 20 items in my arms and it's kind of hard to juggle and balance them. So maybe it's just always good to kind of take one and you never know, you might buy more things than you, than you expect. So Melanie pulls out her shopping list and she uses her list in the grocery store. So this is pretty important too. Uh, if I don't write a list for when I go grocery shopping, I don't end up getting half the things that I need because I won't remember them once I get to the store. It's especially bad when I go to the store when I'm hungry because then I just buy things that sound good and they may not necessarily make up a meal or be really things that go together. So I always write a shopping list. Usually I put it on my phone. That just makes it easy. Then I don't have to carry around a list. So ground beef is on her shopping list. Melanie finds ground beef in the meat section. Melanie needs one and a half pounds of ground beef. She reads the labels on the packages. A large package contains one pound of ground beef. Melanie puts the one pound package in her cart. So for whatever reason, whatever recipe she's making, she needs one and a half pounds of ground beef so she's got to look at the package and read the package to make sure that she gets enough for whatever she's making. So she picks up a package, she reads it, and it says one pound of ground beef. Is that enough? No, not really quite enough, right? So let's see what she does. Melanie also needs a half pound package. She reads the label of the smaller package and it is a half pound of ground beef. Melanie puts that in her cart too. So nice, she founds, find, found one that's a half a pound. And so with the one that's a pound and the one that's a half pound, that's one and a half pounds of ground beef and that's just what she needs. Perfect. Melanie can now check ground beef off her list. Now she needs to find frozen vegetables. Melanie searches in the freezer section. Melanie finds the packages of frozen vegetables. She reads the labels on the packages. A small package contains 16 ounces. Melanie needs a package that contains, or a small package contains 12 ounces. Melanie needs a package that contains 16 ounces. So what do you think she might do? Let's see. Melanie puts the small package back into the freezer and she finds a larger package and reads the label. This package contains 16 ounces. Perfect, she found the right size. Melanie puts the larger package into her cart. Melanie can now check frozen vegetables off her list. Now she needs to find a bag of potatoes. Melanie searches in the produce section. So the produce section is where all the vegetables and stuff like that is. So Melanie finds the bin of potatoes. She reads the labels on the bags of potatoes. The largest bag contains 10 pounds of potatoes. That is too much. Melanie needs three and a half pounds. 
Melanie finds the smallest bag of potatoes. The smallest bag contains five pounds of potatoes. That is closer to what she needs. So Melanie puts the smallest bag into her cart. Sometimes this happens when you go shopping. You might not find the exact size of item that you're looking for or about. So sometimes you might have to kind of just settle on something that's close to the size you need. So in this instance, she needed three and a half pounds. There was a five pound bag. That's a little too much, but maybe she could find something else to make with those potatoes. This happens to me. Sometimes I'll be making stew or something and I'll get some potatoes and I'll have some leftover. So, you know, on a different day, I might make some fries or mashed potatoes, something like that. Melanie can now check potatoes off her list. Melanie continues to shop at the grocery store. So she finishes all her list and she gets everything she needs and she heads home. Um, like I said, making a list is a great way to make sure you get everything you need at the grocery store. Uh, we try to plan out our meals so that way uh, we can only have to go shopping maybe once a week or once every other week. So, you know, we plan out dinners and, you know, I'll look at a recipe. For instance, this tonight I'm making pork loin with potatoes. So I knew that I needed, you know, one and a half pounds of pork loin and I knew I needed some little, I like the little baby tomatoes. Uh, so I made sure to put those on my list when we went, when I had somebody go shopping for me yesterday. Same with, I always make salads for lunch, you guys know that, so I always put those items on my list. I know that to make the salads I make for, you know, me and my family, um, I make like six salads a week for lunches uh, for me and Yanni, so, you know, I always need two pounds of chicken or two pounds of beef or something, whatever kind of meat I want to put in there. I know I need that for my salads every week. It's just good to plan ahead and have an idea about what you might want. So now, I guess we'll look at, these are some of the words that we saw in the story. So if you're interested in any looking at any of those words, here they are. But now we're going to look at maybe a label of a food item that you might find at your house and kind of delve a little bit deeper into the food label. Uh, so everything you buy at the store that's considered food should have a label on it and it should have some nutritional facts on there and some information about the product, including ingredients, stuff like that. So if you want to pause here and maybe find a package at your house of something you might like to eat. I personally pulled this out of my recycling bin. It's a box of Cap'n Crunch, the Crunch Berries. I really love cereal. Maybe a little too much sometimes. <laughs> so this is what I'm going to be using to fill out this worksheet that I attached. We're going to do this together. So find a product. And then you'll need the sheet that kind of looks like this food label worksheet. So with uh, nutritional facts and stuff like that, and we'll talk about what these mean. I also already, I just took a picture of the label I'm looking at so you can see that and see what I am getting my information from. So if you don't have a product around your house you wanna use and you wanna just do what I'm doing, that's okay too. Ooh. Let's scroll down here. So I'm just gonna scroll down to the part where we have to fill in some information. I think I can fit it all. Um, one part of the document, so I don't have to scroll, scroll, scroll. Move my video, and I'll get my little pen out so I can fill this out. 
So the first part says, write the name of your food product here. So I'm just gonna write crunch berries because that's the main All right, it's kind of hard to write with this little pen. So I'm going to do the best I can. There we go. I wrote down crunch berries. So we have to look at our label, and it says how many servings per container. So that means based on what they say is a serving, how many times could you eat this product? How many servings are per, there per container? Usually that's written kind of at the top of the nutritional facts. So if I look over here, I'll underline it. There's 10 servings per container. So I'll write 10, which means I should be able to eat this 10 times if I follow the recommended serving size. So the serving size is what the, the company recommends that you eat for one serving. Um, so if we look over back at our nutritional facts over here, the serving size for crunch berries says one cup. And I'll tell you, normally when I eat crunch berries or cereal, I probably at least eat two servings at a time because one cup doesn't seem very big to me. <laughs> and then we can look at, so I'll give you a minute to do that to find your serving size and your servings per container. So next, we're going to look at how many calories are in our product. Um, if you don't know what a calorie is, typically a calorie is a unit of measurement. So it's, if we look at Google, which I just Googled, a calorie is a unit of energy. So... Typically, and most products will say this, that they base all this information on if you eat 2,000 calories a day. That's just kind of the average where they put people. So if we look at our box over here, how many calories are in my product? For, per serving size, per one cup, there's 150 calories. So the next part, we gotta do a little math. And, you know, I got my phone here, so it's okay to use a calculator to do this little bit of math. So if I were to eat this whole box of cereal, and I'm sure there's some of us out there that have done that before, where we've eaten a whole box of cereal. If I were to eat that whole box of cereal, how many calories would be in that whole box? So that would be, so we have 10, so we set up at the top, we have 10 servings. So we would do 10 times 150 because that's how many calories or how many we calories we said were in a serving. So for me, I'm just gonna write this below. Oops, that looks like six.
Here we go. So 1,500 calories in a whole box. So if you were to eat the recommended amount of calories per day, that's a lot of calories. You know, if you ate a whole box of cereal, that's most of your calories for the day. So this next part, this is kind of up to our interpretation. Is your product serving size realistic for you to eat? Um, probably, I guess you could eat a cup. I would say probably no for me because like I said, I typically probably eat at least two servings when I eat cereal. To make a bowl of cereal with just one cup of cereal wouldn't really be a lot. So have they been deceptive by listing a small serving size? Kinda, I think so. So it makes it like makes it seem like the product isn't as bad for you as it probably is. So then we can look at what is the total fat listing for one serving of your food. So if I go back over to my chart over here, it's a little easier for me to see over here. So total fat is two grams. And they list that at about being 2% of how much you should eat on a normal daily basis. That's not too bad. So again, if I ate the whole box of cereal, if I ate the whole box of cereal, how many grams of fat would I be eating? So we would do two times 10, that's 20. So that's, you know, it's not the worst. That's 20% of your daily intake. It could be worse. <laughs> so there's two types of fat that are bad for you, saturated fat and trans fat. If your product has saturated fat, how many grams are in one serving? So if I look back at my thing, it has 0.5 grams. So it's not the best for you. So if your product lists the ingredients, do you see hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated? So let's look. Nope. So if I look at my ingredients, which is the very, very bottom part, I'll circle it over here. It does not list hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated. And then what are the total sugars listed for one serving of your food? Let's look at my sugars. Sixteen grams. Which is listed at thirty two percent of how much sugar you should eat in a day. That's kind of a lot. Let's see. So then overall, we kind of think about, you know, is this product really healthy? I would say this, this particular cereal, not really. It's not the best for you. It's not the worst you could eat right for breakfast either. I've seen you guys in my classroom try to eat worse things for breakfast. So all things in moderation, you know, are chocolate chip cookies bad for you? Yeah. Are they delicious? Oh yeah. Does that mean you should never eat a chocolate chip cookie? No, right? You should always eat things in moderation. You can eat a chocolate chip cookie every once in a while if you want one, right? So I know that might've been kind of tough for some of you to look at the, the food labels, but I hope you learned a little something about thinking about being healthy. We're going to go over this a little bit more and maybe some food safety things this month. I hope you have a great day and I'll talk to you guys later.